اللهم صل على محمد وآل محمد وعجل فرجهم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين بارئ الخلائق أجمعين بائث الأنبياء والمرسلين ثم الصلاة والسلام على سيدنا حبيبي نفوسنا أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم اللهم رب شهر رمضان الذي أنزلت فيه القرآن السلام عليكم dear brothers and sisters dear viewers watching our program salam to all of you all over the world May Allah accept your prayers and amas and inshallah through your prayers may Allah respond and reply to our duas. The major dua of, of us is the appearance of the Imam Al-Mahdi Jalallah Ta'ala Farajahu Sharif. And also I would like to uh, congrat on the occasion of the birthday of the Imam Al-Hassan Al-Mushtaba alayhi salam Mubarak to all of you. We are on the very blessed time of the holy month of the Ramadan. We passed half of the holy month of Ramadan. Still we have half left. So this gracious time, inshallah, during our talk today, I mentioned that how... Uh, the time of the holy month of Ramadan is very important in the mind of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba. He is the Masum, he is the Imam, he knows the behind side of the holy month of Ramadan. In one of the saying of Imam, uh, from Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, he says that the month of Ramadan is the month of Al Musabaqa, it is a month of competition. Those who are believers, they compete actually in this month and they try to be prior than the others because they know that how any minute of this month is very gracious because during this holy month, even the sleeping, even breathing, it has reward. So Imam, so Imam alayhi salam knows this that he says that some people they try to be the best they try to be the pioneer in this competition and some people they are lazy so they lose this competition even some people they don't join to the competition some of them they go away of the, 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 the realm of the competition. And Imam alayhi salam says that they lost everything. So we are in the middle of the month of the Ramadan, which is the birthday of the Imam al-Hassan al-Mushtaba alayhi salam. And Imam says that how this month is very important. We passed, by the way, the half of this Ramadan. We hope that all of our sins would be forgiven by the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the left, particularly the, 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 the left of the month of the Ramadan, the last decade of the month of Ramadan, that is a very great time. According to some mystics, the, the beginning of their year, they start by the holy month of Ramadan. And you know, dear brothers and sisters, in some of the uh, books of the spirituality, which uh, these books are teaching us how to gain the spirituality, they start by the holy month of Ramadan. Because it is the spring of the year, because it is the beginning of the year of the spirituality. And in these books, it is written that the last 10 days of the month of the Ramadan, that is a very great time. That is the gist of the holy month of Ramadan. Uh, we have the hadith uh, say, uh, says that the, the, your year is just uh, is uh, compact in the holy month of Ramadan, and holy month of Ramadan is compact in the tenth day of the 
its last uh, last ten days, and its last ten days ten days is compact with the Laylatul Qadr. So we are there, we are approaching with the very great time. That's why Imam Al Hasan Al Mustafa Alayhi Salam, who is observer of this great event, uh, this great opportunity, he says that that is the competition. So in the middle of the holy month of the Ramadan, we have the occasion of the birthday of the Imam Al Hasan Al Mustafa Alayhi Salam, and we are very blessed. To be the follower and the lover of the Imam Al Hasan Al Mustafa Alayhi Salam, dear brothers and sisters, according to to Quran Al Karim, uh, these days are called and entitled as Ayam Allah, because these days are the days. We, we are inspiring by the message of Allah. These days are affiliated to a person, they are the people of Allah. If Imam Hassan, if Imam Al Hussein alayhi salam, his blood is the blood of Allah. You know, and actually it never means that his blood is the blood of Allah. Allah has never blood. It means that his blood is affiliated to Allah the Almighty. So, in some cases, your day, your night would be affiliated to the Allah the Almighty alayhi salam, or Allah the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, there is another saying uh, from Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam which confirms my saying that these days are the Ayyam Allah and we have to benefit of that. The birthday of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba is the very blessing days. We have to benefit of that. And I would like today to talk how we can get of that, how we can benefit of this great day. Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba says that the one who worship Allah, the one who pray Allah, the one who make ibadah to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allah makes him in a way that the world would be servant of him. The world would worship him. The world would be, the existence would obey him. That is not the kind of exaggeration, dear brothers and sisters. When you connect yourself with the creator of the creature, when you make yourself evident to the creator of the creature, al khaliq then the whole Al-Alam would be your servant, would, would be your evident. So, in the, the, in the Ayyam Allah, as much as that is a very great opportunity, we have to make ourselves closer to the Allah the Almighty. As much as we make ourselves closer to the Allah the Almighty, the, the, the world would be nothing to us. Uh, to us. The world would, would be obedient to ourselves, as it was for the Ahlul Bayt, as it was for the very great um, scholars and ulamas, you heard many stories about them. That is nothing for them. So, Ayyamullah is a good opportunity. It is not only a title. Actually, during the Ayyamullah, we have to make ourselves close to Allah the Almighty. How we can make ourselves close to Allah the Almighty? Through, through the, 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 the person these days are affiliated to. For example, on the birthday of the Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba alayhi salam, we have to come together, we have to go through the books, we have to make ourselves familiar with the, with the life and teachings of the Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba alayhi salam. And today, Alhamdulillah, till now, I had the chance to narrate two hadiths from Imam Al Hassan Al Mushtaba, and you see how they are enlightening our heart. In one hadith, he says that the month of the Ramadan is the month of competition. And the second, he said that if you be evident to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, 
the word would be your evident. So, during Ayyamullah, the days of Allah, which one is the birthday of the Imam Al Hassan Al Mushaba, alayhi salam, and my congrats to all of you, Mubarak, to you all over the world, dear brothers and sisters. These days are Ayyamullah. In Ayyamullah, we have to make ourselves more closer to the Allah, the Almighty. How? By making ourselves familiar with the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, with the characteristics of the Ahlul Bayt. And we try, we have to try to approach them. We have to try to make ourselves similar to them. You know, in Ziyara Ashura, we have Allahumma jal mahyaya mahya Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad wa mamati mamata Muhammadin wa Ali Muhammad. O oh Allah, make ourselves first mahyaya, my life, similar to the life of the Ahlul Bayt. Then, if my life is as well as as close as to life of the Ahlul Bayt, then my death would be similar to them as well. So, during these days, we have to make ourselves closer to them. We have to approach to them. That's why today is Ayyamullah. In Ayyamullah is something which is written in Quran, وَابْتَغُوا وَلَيْهِ wasila. It is a kind of means. It is a kind of instrument. By which we, it is a kind of bridge. By passing that, we approach, we enter a land which is full of lightning and inspiring spirituality, and you are close to the Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam. Alayhi salam. So, uh, um, occasion of the birthday of Imam Al Hassan Al Mustafa alayhi salam is an opportunity we make ourselves closer to his manner and his teachings, uh, his characteristics. Today I would like to mention some of uh, his characteristics and his sayings to enlighten our heart and to be more closer to to his teachings and to actually his manhaj and his method and path. One point I would like to highlight here is that how Imam Hassan al-Mustaba was very peaceful. Dear brothers and sisters, if Imam al Hussein alayhi salam is famous of being Shaheed and Sayyid al-Shuhada, the master of the martyrs, Imam Hassan al mustaba alayhi salam, his position is very high. If we compare and if we understand how was the circumstances and atmosphere at the time of the Imam al Hassan al mustaba alayhi salam, we would understand that what Imam al Hassan al mustaba alayhi salam did in his time that is very great. So the place Imam al Hassan al Mustaba alayhi salam made a ceasefire agreement by the Muawiyah, it was the Sabbat. If we study the details of the agreement, if we go to the depth of the the, 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 the atmosphere Imam al Hassan al Mustaba alayhi salam was living in we undoubtedly would say that Sabat of the Imam al Hassan al Mustaba is the Karbala of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Look to the companions of the Imam al Hassan and compare it with the companions of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. The companions of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam are those. On the night of Ashura, Imam al Hussein alayhi salam says that you are the good, you are the best person of the world. Go away, don't be ashamed. You can go 
because the enemy is seeking me alone. But the companions of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, they say that Imam, shame on us. How we can leave you alone? Not only we leave you alone, but also we will be martyred. We will go to the battlefield before you. Before Hashemite go to the battlefield, we will take part in the jihad. And it was so. They came with some, they came with families. But compare it with the companions of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam. In a way that the companions of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, you heard about. Not only they were true supporters of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, but also some of them, they made problem, many problems to Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam. In a way that just I would like to mention one of them, that is enough for you just to understand in which circumstances and atmosphere Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba was living in. They the sajjada of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba on which Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba was praying. And some of them, they injured actually Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba. Oh, those who were within the troops of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba, these people. They injured Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba. These compare these companions with the companions of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. It, it is uncomparable. Compare the commander of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, the moon of Bani Hashemite, Abal Fazl al Abbas. Compare this great commander of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam, which Shem came to him because Shem had a relationship, blood relationship with the, uh, with the Abal Fazl al Abbas alayhi salam and told to him, Abbas, leave Imam Hussein alayhi salam alone because tomorrow he would be killed. I have relationship with you. You are a great banger. You are a great hero. Come to us. Join us. Save yourself. And Abbas alayhi salam never left Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. This is the, he is the commander, it is the commander of the Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Look to the commanders of the Imam al Hassan al Mushtaba alayhi salam. Al Madloom. Al Madloom. Al Madloom. His commanders left him alone. The first commander, just he was paid. By the payment, he left Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. This Imam alayhi salam, he was predicting what is going on. That's why Imam selected and actually the Imam chose some com commanders as a successor of the another. The second one, became the, the commander. Second one uh, was paid as well and he left the mom. The third one was paid. It was the soul. You see how the circumstances are different. So that's why uh, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi wa Wasallam he was saying that Al Hassan wal Hussein Imaman Qama aw Qaada Hussein and Hassan, both of them are Imam. Whether one stand or to sit. Maybe one is standing against the corruption, against the tyrannic regime, like Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. And the second was sitting. The one who is sitting like Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, don't blame him, he is not revolutionist. Because they try to teach us, oh, our followers, you have to 
watch the circumstances. In some atmosphere, you have to act as Imam al Hassan alayhi salam. And in some atmosphere, you have to do as Imam Hussein alayhi salam did. So, Ahlul Bayt alayhi salam are teaching us a lifestyle, but in a very different actually forms in a different methods. We have to, the peace of the Ahlul Bayt are as jihad. What they did as peace, it was not against the jihad. And if they did the jihad, it was full of peace. So there is no vice versa between jihad and peace in the eyes of the Ahlul Bayt. So the peace uh, of the Imam al Hussein, Imam al Hassan alayhi salam, the contract he made uh, to establish a peace, it was a kind of jihad. And the jihad of Imam Hussein alayhi salam, it was for the sake of the establishing peace. That is the teaching of the Ahlul Bayt alayhi, alayhi salam. I hope during the, uh, this Blessed day, this Mubarak day, we can enlighten our heart with the teachings of the Ahlul Bayt, particularly the Imam Al Hassan alayhi salam, and uh, we make ourselves more closer to the this great Imam of the Shia and the Muslim Ummah. Jazakumullah khaira, again Mubarak to you, Allahumma. أعز الإسلام والمسلمين اللهم انصر من نصر الدين اللهم اغفر ذنوبنا بحق الحسين بحق الحسن بحق فاطمة بحق أهل البيت عليهم السلام والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته